o'clock. So we're going to call the meeting of the Board of Public Works to order. As chair of the Board of Public Works, I find that due to the state of emergency declared by the governor as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic, and in accordance with the governor's emergency order number 12, pursuant to executive order 2020-04, this public body is authorized to meet electronically. Please note that there is no physical location to observe and listen contemporaneously to this meeting, which was authorized pursuant to the governor's emergency order. However, in accordance with the emergency order, I am confirming that we are providing public access to the meeting by telephone with additional access possibilities by video or other electronic means. We are utilizing Zoom through the city's IT department for this electronic meeting. To access Zoom, please refer to the agenda or the city's website for the meeting link. To join by phone, dial 1-929-436-2866. And the meeting ID is 9905289570. Password is 835218. The public may also view this meeting on Comcast Channel 16. We're also providing public notice of the necessary information for accessing the meeting. We previously gave notice to the public of the necessary information for accessing the meeting through public postings. Instructions have been provided on the City of Nashua's website at www.nashuanh.gov and publicly noticed at City Hall and at the Department of Public Works, uh, the administration building at 9 Riverside Drive. We are further providing a mechanism for the public to alert the public body during the meeting if there are problems with access. If anybody has a problem accessing the meeting via phone or channel 16, please call 603-821-2049 and they will help you connect. And we will adjourn the meeting if the public is unable to access the meeting. Uh, in the event the public is unable to access via the phone number mentioned above, the meeting will be adjourned and rescheduled. Please note that all votes that are taken during this meeting shall be done by roll call. Let's start the meeting by taking a roll call attendance. When each member states their presence, you should also state why you are not physically present for the meeting and state whether there is anyone in the room with you during the meeting, which is required under the right to know law. Would the clerk please call the roll? Mayor Donches. I am here and I'm socially distancing because of the pandemic and there is no one in the room with me. Commissioner Tees. Good morning. I'm attending remotely due to the pandemic. I'm in my office alone and uh, thank you. Commissioner Pappas. I'm here. I'm in, at home in a room by myself and I'm staying at home due to the pandemic. Commissioner Shoneman. I'm here. I'm attending remotely because of the governor's emergency order and I'm alone in this room in my house. And uh, I understand that Commissioner Moriarty was not able to join us today. So um, we have four of the five commissioners present. Uh, the first item on the agenda is public comment. Is there any member of the public who would like to address the board or the commission, the board? Um, I don't hear anyone, so we will go on to the budget workshop. Um, I'd like to, now, we are going to hear from all of the departments in public works. I'd like to just give a brief overview. Uh, this has been a particularly difficult year because we are uh, been slammed as a term we could use for, by the state of New Hampshire. Uh, they have raised pension costs. This has nothing to do with wages, uh, but they've raised the pension costs and the city is part of the state pension system by $4.4 million and are reducing school aid uh, by 7.4. Uh, this $12 million, almost $12 million hit uh, translates into a 5.5% uh, property tax increase by wow. before we even get to the city budget. So given that difficult set of circumstances, 
uh, we have taken a number of steps to try to curb uh, the rate of increase in the tax rate. Uh, number one, we have made very serious progress with uh, respect to healthcare costs by developing a reformed HMO plan, which has been adopted in a number of departments. And this is having a significant effect on healthcare costs. Uh, going back a couple of years uh, before we were hit by the state of New Hampshire, uh, health, rising healthcare costs at the rate of uh, $3 million increase per year was the most significant financial challenge we were facing. Uh, so I want to thank the departments that have agreed, the employee groups that have agreed to the reformed uh, health plan. Those include AFSCME and the Board of Public and the Public Works employees who agreed in their last contract. And uh, as a result, uh, their weekly costs have gone down and the costs for the, state of, for the city have gone down as well. Uh, in addition, I issued budget guidelines asking various departments, um, almost all departments, to achieve a 0% increase. Um, that included all the city hall, all of city hall, public works, police, fire, and I did give some latitude to the school department uh, because of the issues uh, with online learning and potential learning loss. And I want to thank public works, director photo and others, all of our department heads for working hard on the budget because they have come in at zero. Uh, certainly not easy. Certainly there's pain associated with that, but we're trying to be accountable and responsive to the taxpayers. Uh, I want to thank our city hall departments, even though they're not part of this meeting right now, because we have achieved a 0% increase in, in the city hall departments as a whole by reducing positions and taking other steps uh, which have helped us control costs. Uh, and so we've achieved zero there. Uh, the, you know, the, uh, some of our other departments have not really taken the same kind of actions and uh, have submitted budgets that are much higher than, and I'm talking about those with uh, independent boards, uh, particularly fire and police. Uh, they have not um, conformed with those guidelines. And, you know, we'll be discussing that during the budget process. But I just wanted to give the commissioners the kind of the overview as to why this budget is so tight. And uh, we still think we can meet the needs of the citizens, but certainly um, it's not ideal to reduce positions or uh, take some of the other steps that are being taken to, to keep these costs under control. So with that, uh, um, I just wanted to give you again a, a kind of an overview of like how we got here and why this budget, why these budgets are so tight. Uh, and I, unless other commissioners wish to uh, comment on that or respond to it, which certainly would be fine, uh, we will move to the budget workshop. Um, uh, Mr. Cameron. Mayor, I, if I may. Yeah, go ahead. I wanted, um, I wanted to thank. Um, Director Photo, it was um, you know kind of kind of last minute that I that I had some ideas together, but um, I appreciate all the extra um, items they put in, kind of the executive summaries for each department before. So, and I think it's it's good for the public to see, okay, this is this is actually what we this is what we got done. This is what the engineering department done. This is what you know. This is what the street department's gotten done this year. When you look at the number of potholes, I, I, I found that information very helpful and I, I, I thank her for getting that together. And I agree with you completely. Uh, throughout the budget, we're trying to, you know, increase the information that's provided in the ways that you've, similar ways to what you've just discussed, just discussed Commissioner Papa. So mm -hmm. it is great to have more information. We're trying to be more informative uh, with, the, with the budget presentation. Anyone else? All right, well, why don't we go on to the budget presentation uh, that I assume will be led by Director Photo. Yes, thank you, Mayor. Um, so as the, uh, the mayor mentioned earlier, we did bring in our general fund budgets um, level funded or zero with a 0% increase. Um, 
And uh, as far as fuel and utilities go, we followed uh, purchasing guidelines for, um, I'll just run through those really quickly so commissioners have a sense. Um, the recommendation was electricity at 0% um, increase, natural gas 5% increase, uh, water, uh, which of course is Penichuk, at 6.08% increase. Wow. Um, telephone, cellular service, 0% um, increase. Postage and shipping rates uh, went up anywhere between 2 and 5%. And a fuel um, for um, diesel fuel was 0%. Heating oil, 0%. Uh, unleaded gasoline, though, uh, went up 23%, which is, which is pretty significant. So I just wanted to um, let you know what those numbers were. The so our general fund uh, budgets are down from last year by about 166,000, um, and uh, we're bringing it at 12,925,800. That's administration, engineering, streets, and parks and recreation. Our solid waste our in our wastewater enterprise funds, we were not able to bring in um, at zero percent, and that's par primarily because of uh, permitting. Um, issues that, of course, we had to meet, uh, and uh, and also capital, some capital requirements, which we will go through um, as we go through each of the individual departments. Um, the wastewater is the most uh, significant of the two, at thirty seven point two percent increase, and that is all related to capital projects. So, with that, Mayor, with your permission, what I'd like to do is go through each of the um, individual departments, starting with revenue and then um, going to expenses. And yes, please, uh, please if that's okay, we'll start with it, admin and engineering. Usually what I ask people to hold their questions till the end, but in this case, please ask questions as we go. Um, if, there's, if there's a question, um, please, please feel free to ask um, as, as the superintendents are going through each of their departments. I think it's easier to answer the questions than then, then go back. So uh, with that, we will start with um, administration and engineering. And um, the revenues will start on uh, page 19 of, of 92. So Dan, are you, I'll turn it over to you. Uh, thank you. I got to get the right packet up here, I guess. Um, <clears throat> revenues. Uh, I don't think there's significant uh, changes. I mean, it's our, our usual um, permits and those sorts of things. Um, get to, uh... Sorry, I'm gonna get to... Uh... Right page here. You said page nine. You said page uh, ninety-two. Just, first. just go to your rep. It, you, what, do you have your revenues in front of you, Dan? No. Well, yeah, I do. I did. Yes, I do have. Them. Okay. Page, so just you can 19. just go through them on your. You can just go through them on okay. your page. Yeah. Sorry about that. So, um, drain drain layers license is uh, you know, ten ten thousand five hundred. Um, Small change from last year. Charges for services, you know, sale of maps, 300. Miscellaneous revenue, no change. Um, so total total changes uh, uh, last year, 9,800. This year, 11,300. So small changes. So you want me to go to expenses? You can go to expenses and appropriations. Okay. And that would be um, starting on page 24. For those that are following, and maybe yeah. just the mayor who's following <laughs> the page um, numbers. I'm uh, gonna get to that here quickly. There. Um, engineering, engineering, and uh, admin, but but mostly uh, engineering. Our our stuff. Our budget is primarily um, wages, salaries, and benefits. So those changes are um, contractual. Um, other changes that we've made uh, in the budget this year um, to try to achieve guidelines. Um, we have um, 
property services has changed. We've reduced that a little bit. Um, that's actually based upon uh, guidelines and historical usage. Um, iPads or telephone and cellular has increased uh, a little bit, and that's because we're doing more use with remote devices, iPads and such in the field, using the technology that, that's available. Um, and then that's been offset by a reduction in mileage. We, we, uh, we've, you know, based upon uh, what we've been seeing. And then there's also a small reduction of $1,000 in computer software uh, to try to help meet the guidelines. Um, any questions, I guess? About any anything? questions from anyone? Um, if, if I may, on, if I may. So under 51300 overtime, um, how come we had such a, re if we had such a reduction in the overtime, unless I'm reading it incorrectly, um, how can we still do the 32.5 if so far we've only spent five, just over 5,000? Um, so we do, you know, we have a, a lot of, it's a busy summer coming up. We have a lot of work. Um, we have, uh, you know, the budget was set historically based upon um, you know, doing quite a bit of night paving and that sort of thing. We hadn't had that inspection. Um, we've offset that some with contracted services, but we have another robust paving year coming up. And um, as well as private construction is is going very strongly. So, you know, sometimes that requires uh, some overtime too, so. Oh, okay, so, so, mo so most of your overtime is done towards the end of the, towards the summer. That's why we that's why there's the discrepancy. Is that right? Yeah, we just started. We just started. Uh, you know, our paving season this this week. Yeah. Um, start milling and paving. So okay. so you know that those that work will start to uh, get okay. the budget here at the end of the year. All right. Thank you. Anyone else? All right, Director Frodo. Okay. Um, next, Mayor, we'll move to the Street Department. Um, and we'll start with revenues on uh, page 20. And Superintendent Ibarra? I have page 31. I'm using that That's little okay. summary. Okay. So good morning, everybody. Morning. Um, the streets, the biggest uh, revenue source would be the snow towing, and that really stays pretty flat. That's a break-even venture. Uh, if we auction off any vehicles, any out of service vehicles, we put the same number in there as far as what we, we think we might see. So there's really not a lot of revenue coming in at the street department. If I move to my budget, I'll highlight or summarize the changes in the street department proposal. As the mayor alluded to, uh, we had to look hard at positions. So in an effort to meet this 0% budget guideline, uh, we are deciding to hold back on two positions at this time, at least proposed it. And that would be one Mason okay, and so, electric, one truck driver. So now you're on page uh, 30, right? I'm Just, reading out of page 89 from the book I have. Okay, sorry, well, you were, have you, were, you were supposed to print the, the other pages, but that's okay. So now but I just want, for the commissioner's sake, page 30. Yeah, gotcha. so now we've, yeah. Moved, we've moved to the- we're, uh, we're, we're moved, He's moved to appropriations. Right. <laughs> so, so, okay. It's my luck today. Mm -hmm. <laughs> my apologies. No the problem. information will be the same. Um, okay. So as I was saying, uh, we're gonna hold back, at least we proposed to hold back on assigned maintenance and a driver position. And- no. A mason and a driver position, right, John? That's what I said. No? He said sign maintenance. Oh boy, see now I'm flustered. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so Mason and then a driver. Oh boy. Not enough coffee yet, I suppose. And the, the other changes in the wages are contractual. Um, and the benefits also, those are contractual. But if I move on to 54 property services, heating and gas, um, we're up 5%. So 2420 on that line, that's 54114. 
on the water, 54141, 6.0%, that's up 600. Uh, in an effort to meet the, the budget guidelines of 0% on snow plowing services, we thought we could steal 25,000 out of line 54207. So snow plowing services. Again, in an effort to meet this guideline, line 54280 building and grounds maintenance, I eliminated 5,000 out of that proposal. Uh, vehicle repairs and maintenance based on the market, line 54600, we're up $5,067. It's about a 2% increase there. And my other change would be in 55 other services, 55118, that's telephone and cellular. Uh, with the pandemic, we issued some more iPads and laptops and uh, increased our cell. So that is raising $1,220. Line 61 supplies and materials. Uh, we reduced line 61299 miscellaneous supplies by $2,000. And in traffic signal materials, line 61556, we raised it $2,500. And that's in the hopes of uh, putting some electronic components for the cabinets in stock on the shelf, which will help us make uh, more timely repairs, whether they're damaged due to a storm or a vehicle accident that takes out a cabinet. And that would be the summary of the street department changes for proposals. Sorry for the rough start. Not at all. All right, any questions or comments from anybody? Um, I, I, have, I have a couple of questions. Mm -hmm. Yes, Commissioner Pappas. So I know that, that we, we did come up with an AFSCME contract that they, they that people did get a raise, but is it essentially going to be a wash because of savings we might get from overtime and snow plowing? That's hard to predict. Overtime, uh, going with Mother Nature, you try and base it on historical, an average of 22 storms a year. Overtime, it also plays a part with emergency sewer digs. Those are hard to predict also, but we do carry the largest overtime in the division being the biggest department and running snow services here. Right, but do you, do, do you think that some of the overtime because of changes we've, because of changes with the snow plan? Do, do we you have, see- we, a From a management perspective and eliminating shotguns, we should see some uh, changes in the overtime, yes. I would agree we, with that. But we, we, there are, there were also some changes that everybody that um, up to 80 people now will be receiving on call pay. Um, so, okay. you know, that, that's going to, yep. um, there, there's going to be a trade off there. So it'll be interesting to see Commissioner Pappas. I think this next year will be very telling to see um, what the savings will be, but there will definitely be some savings somewhere. And I'm after this, sure was, after the contract was signed, we only had one storm to implement right, right. the changes. So we're just getting into it. But yes, and we're hopeful. Good. Now, how, how do you, um, how has been the feedback on, oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Mayor, can I, can I go, can I yeah, ask yeah, a couple more ahead. questions? Okay. Mm -hmm. So how, how do you feel about how the brining um, operation has gone? I feel it's excellent. Uh, the guys are on board. Finally, it took a little transition, but they believe in what we're doing. We're seeing positive results when we apply it. And uh, the guys are actually liking how it impacts the operation. And we've seen probably about a 20% reduction in the use of salt. Yeah, I, 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 you can tell when the street has been brined and I do think that, um, I think that, I think that it's, it's got some positive results there. Um, I, th I think that's, I think that's it. Oh, I, oh, I know. Do we have any money? Um, do we, do we have a sense as to how much money we have left over from snow plow operations? 
I can get that yeah. information for yes, you. Yes, it's it's, it's 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 roughly three hundred and thirty thousand, Commissioner Pappas. Um, do do we have any thoughts? You're entertaining any thoughts on what what's going to happen with that money? Um, I, I, um, not yet. We haven't uh, we haven't really we we've discussed some things, but but we haven't uh, there there are a lot of needs both in public works and I think throughout the city. So um, I, I think that's a, a discussion, an ongoing discussion. And since it, it, since it comes from salary and wages, what can what are you limited as to what you can spend it on? Um, what what happens, Commissioner Pappas, is that uh, at the end of the year in all departments, if money is not reallocated, um, but you know within a department by the end of the year, um, it forms part of the city's surplus at the end. So at the end of the year, the you know unexpended appropriations and revenue which exceeded the budget estimates become part of the city's you know annual surplus. And then the Board of Aldermen decides what to do with that. So there's usually some considerable money that goes to tax relief. Last year it was four and a half million and various alloc you know, so-called escrows. And I think we escrowed three, uh, two or 300,000 for the public works project out at the landfill. I mean, things like that, I, you know, the, the office building, but that's sort of the kind of the overview of, you know, what happens. Okay. So, so what may not necessarily be going towards a, a public works issue, but it could be going towards tax relief. Correct. And then as okay. part of the whole escrow process, public works may benefit from some escrows, like, for example, the one I mentioned. And I think we did some other things for public works last year. Okay. Um, but to the, okay. the question, the kind of the question, you know, the, the actual budget is actually, I mean, I say they achieved the zero, but it's actually down. If you look at mm -hmm. 48, uh, page 48 of 92, you will see that the entire public works budget was 12.8 last year and now is 12.5 roughly. Yep. Um, now, you know, that's partially personnel reductions, but also if you look through the benefits lines, you'll see that the healthcare costs are down from last year. That's that's the mm -hmm. effect of the uh, reformed healthcare plan. So okay. when you put all that together, you know, it has helped the division control these costs. That's great. Any other, Commissioner Pappas, do you have uh, anything else you would like to raise? No, no, I'm all set. Thank you. Anyone else? All right, Director well, Cotto. We'll, we'll move to Parks and Recreation, and the revenues um, are on page 21. Thank you, Director. Jason? Good, good morning, everybody. Good morning. Um, so in terms of our revenues, uh, there hasn't been really any changes at all. The, the biggest thing that you'll notice throughout all of our revenue streams on page 21 um, are that there hasn't been a lot of spends or, or there hasn't been a lot of revenue, I should say, coming in. Um, that's mostly due to COVID and all of last year and even this past winter with a lot of camps and um leagues and stuff like that, that that didn't take place whether it was basketball or swimming or or concession fees so so a lot of that stuff didn't really change that much in terms of what we're budgeting for the upcoming year uh we're, we're planning on staying the same as you can see all across the board for uh under line 44 for charges for services um, in terms of miscellaneous revenue from sales of vehicles and equipment. Nothing has changed there. That's staying at 500 from just what we can project, what we could think it could be. Um, if you move to page 22, um, you'll see uh, miscellaneous revenue. These are all the cell tower fees. Um, those are just the only thing that changes with that. It's on, on purchasing guidelines is, is how um, it just grows from year to year. So that's um, that's really the biggest change you'll see there. Um, and, and down at the bottom for 
line 45 999 miscellaneous revenue that's staying flat too that that's staying the same so um, there has been uh, a little bit of growth um, but it's mostly due to cell tower fees increasing over the upcoming year uh, that's really everything that that i have for revenue does anyone have any questions about that before i move to appropriations Jason, could you just comment on the Morins uh, and uh, all the wonderful things that they've done for the city? Just yeah, so, briefly. So I'm, I'm still learning a lot about it, but I've looked into it a little bit with Carolyn's help and um, she can also help speak to this if, if for some reason I don't have all the information. Uh, but but annually the, the Jeff Morin fund um, and under um, not well circumstances for, for how it was established, uh, do, do donate to us fairly regularly. Um, on an annual basis, um, it varies. Um, a, a regular thing that, that is done is they do um, purchase a lot of uh, clothing and uniforms for the leagues and teams. Like uh, I, I believe basketball is a really big one for that. So they help out a great deal with that. Uh, they also have funded um, certain larger projects in terms of uh, mostly it, Jeff Moore and Park, but Roby Park off of Spitbrook Road. Um, so a lot of stuff for the playground over there, whether it was a new footing, there's it's like a rubber polymer type base uh, for the whole playground. That, that was a large project. I wanna say around $100,000. And um, they also provided funding or uh, in forms of a donation for the shade sales. Uh, um, yeah, shade sales that are mm -hmm. over the playground. So the kind of sales that, that we put up, we put up and take down annually just because they can't be up in the winter, but they, uh, they cover the playground. So that was another large donation. Um, I know, you know, I don't want to get too in, into the weeds of what I can't speak about too much, but um, in terms of how it normally works, it's not a budgeted item it comes in terms of, of a donation essentially where it'll come uh, into a into a fund that is then um, distributed to the, the the correct account and um, you know if, if, if you need more detail I know Carolyn has a, a great deal of experience with that she could go into a little more if anyone has any questions uh, anybody have comments or questions for uh, Commissioner Pappas. So I, I, I would just, you know, I would just say that um, I, you know, I, th I think that we're very fortunate um, to have that because I had noticed that they, I think they do all the t-shirts for all the summer camps. Yes. And yes, I, they, I do. They, yes they, they, do. They, they do a lot of the, the uniforms and t-shirts and, and everything. That's quite a bit of what they do. Yeah. And that, sh that, that, um, Having that shade over at Roby really, I think, probably makes it a lot more pleasant. I, I, I think it's, I think it's terrific. Thank you. Anyone else? All right. Uh, Director Photo. Jason, would you like to move on to appropriations for Park and Rec? Absolutely. Which, uh, on page thirty-nine. Thank you, Director. If everyone looks to page 39, um, the bulk of everything on page 39 is salaries and wages. Um, those were all uh, the growth that you see in most of those, um, whether it was in, in, in wages or, or other things, it's all contractual, much the same as some of the other um, departments in the division. The one area of growth that we do have uh, is, is the large or that isn't contractual, I, I guess you could say, is under wages, temporary seasonal, 51,400. Um, it was at 225, 225,000 this, this past year, and we're, we're moving it to 247,353 for the upcoming fiscal year. That's all due to, um, to pool staff mostly, as we're trying to recruit pool staff we had to raise the wages for that. We've had some difficulty in the past years and um, in order to be competitive with surrounding communities and um, try to draw the best candidates that we can, we, we increase the wages. So that's what draw, drew that, that cost up. Um, and, we, and just to put in a plug, Jason, for us, we are looking for guards. So 
if anybody yes. knows of any any um, young people or teachers or, or coaches or anybody that might be interested, uh, please uh, send them our way. We do uh, pay for the certification um, and, um, and 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 all the training and orientation. So um, it's um, it's a pretty good deal if anybody's interested. Okay, so go ahead, Jason. Thank you, Director. That's that's definitely uh, definitely be a help. So thank you. Uh, moving on to page 40 of 92. Oh, can, can, I, can I have a quick, yes, quick question? Yes, Go ahead. Is, Mr. Mayor, can I, yeah, yes, is it okay? Please. Okay. So um, no, longevity, 50, uh, 51, 600. How many, how many employees do we have on longevity? And how does that payment work? I don't have mm -hmm. that specific information, but I could get it for you. Do, do you know anything in more detail about that, Director or Carolyn? Um, yeah, that's so that's contractual. It's in the it, those that is all for AFSCME employees, and it is in the contract. But I'm not sure how many people uh, we pay or, or what what amounts. Uh, but it's all based on uh, the amount of time um, with the city because and and the reason this is in the contract is because. Every all um, if you take um, the groundsmen, they all make the same wage, irregardless of how long they've been with the city. So the contract allows for them to have um, a longevity payment if they've if they've been with the city a certain um, amount of time. Um, but I'm not sure what the exact breakdown of that is. But we we can get it, that for you because it looks. I mean, if if you look under stealth, there's just one person that does it. So did, what is did that person? Is that just for? Is a thousand dollars just what the, just what they got, or is it based on the number of years, or is it a flat thousand for everyone? Does... If you if you if you were looking if you were looking at just Stellos, that would be just for for one one employee, um, right? On on, um, on parks and rec maintenance seventy seven one six fifty. That is for so the rest of the staff. Let me give you some clarification here from the contract. Um, it, the regular full-time employees who, who have been employed by the city for five or more years on an in, un, uninterrupted basis, except by reason of layoff or approved leave of absence are eligible for a uh, longevity payment on the anniversary of their date of hire. Uh, and this was effective July 1st of, of uh, 2011. The longevity payments are as follows. Five to nine years, $400. 10 to 14 years of service, $600. 15 to 19 years, $800, 20 to 24 years of service, $1,000. So that employee, okay. um, Commissioner Pappas, who is at Stellis, um, I'm guessing, um, is in that 20 to 24 okay. uh, year of service window. And then 25 years of service and over $1,200. Okay. All right. Thank, so thank you that for that works. clarification. I, yeah, I You're appreciate welcome. that. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other questions before I move on to the following pages? Okay. Um, page 40 of 92, that just continues the same theme on salaries and wages and fringe benefits. That's all contractual. So that's the reason for if there's any growth in there. Um, same with page 41 for the, the top part of that. Um, in terms of everything else on 41, uh, professional services have stayed the same. Electricity and heating gas, the increases on those are per purchasing guidelines, um, as the director alluded to at the beginning of this, this presentation. Um, page 42, uh, water is the same way in terms of uh, purchasing its growth according to purchasing guidelines. Um, the only other thing on page 42 that we have, um, everything has stayed flat except for equipment rental 54821 that has grown for our uh, portable toilets. We have seen more use of those due to COVID and some other ongoing um, initiatives. So that that has needed to grow in order to be able to handle what, what we are currently spending. Um, page 43, um, much the same as engineering and some of the other divisions. Telephone has grown due to the use of more 
portable devices such as tablets and other things like that. Um, dues and memberships has actually been reduced um, just probably because of the historical use of that. Um, and the same with mileage reimbursements, 55307, that has been reduced just based off of uh, what was historically being used. Uh, page 44, um, nothing has changed there. That's all remained flat. Um, budgeting for what we expect it to be and uh, what has been used in the past. Page 45, keep moving along. Uh, all of the lines, uh, except for fuel unleaded, um, have stayed flat. Fuel unleaded 61,300 on page 45 has uh, grown due to purchasing guidelines, um, as was alluded to at the beginning. Page 46, under supplies and materials, 61428, cleaning and janitorial supplies has been reduced in order to help meet our um, zero initiative, um, just, just mostly based on um, what was historically being used. Tires was reduced for the same purpose. Um, and everything else is budgeted for the same for the upcoming fiscal year. Um, if you're to turn to page 47 under line 71 for equipment, uh, 71625 playground equipment that has been reduced. Uh, by $1,000 from $15,000 to $14,000. Um, it, it's, again, you know, most likely due to uh, what was used historically. And um, also, we've been doing a lot of playground renovations over the past few years, so some of them are getting uh, a lot better. Um, so we're able to kind of offset that with some of the projects that we've done in the past and that we're also looking to continue on on, on a project side. And that's that's all I have for for that and ending on page 47. Uh, anybody with questions or comments? Um, if I may, um, I'm just wondering um, if we've if a decision has been made yet about um, what we're going to do as far as summer camps go and maybe um, the summer fun program fireworks so so much is the trend i'm sure for a lot of uh, other communities and a lot of other other uh, programs such as ours there has been a fair amount that we have released in terms of summer camps um they're of course you know constricted or limited by some of the guidelines set by uh the state and just just covid safety but all of our summer camps are actually um if they're not open for registration already, they will be shortly. We're just waiting on some contact contractual um, sign-offs and some, some finishing up there to, to release the final bit. But um, it looks to be all of our summer camps that were normally held will be held again. So we, we're looking okay. forward to that. That's, that's gonna be exciting and great. Um, a great thing for the community from what we experienced last year. In terms of fireworks that's that's still an ongoing discussion we're meeting yep. um, regularly on that to kind of figure out what we can do and in what capacities and how we can hold it the ultimate goal we, is is to have that um, we we will be having fireworks um definitely right mayor yes <laughs> um, well, there might be we might not let a whole crowd of people in right the room, but uh we'll see what the condition it, it may look a little different but there will there will definitely be uh, fireworks and where we are planning we're we're struggling to hire guards but hopefully they will will get enough to be able to open all the pools um that's that's uh that's the plan and that will look a little bit different jason and i are discussing that yep. um now but um that's what we're planning as far as summer fun goes um we we want to we we've got a number of uh and, and, and add to this jason if i'm missing something but it, there's already a number of movies um that we're planning um, and we're holding back a little bit on making any final decisions on all of the other big summer fun events. Um, uh, we're, we're, we're planning on sometime 
um, probably um, towards the end of May, early June, um, making final decisions on what, what we can and can't do based on um, public health guidance and, and, uh, and what's happening with, with, uh, with COVID. Um, but yeah, we, will be doing, we will be doing some, some um, activities. Um, again, they'll look a little bit different. We likely won't be able to have our opening summer fun day in the fairy tale festival and those some of those big events but um, we're trying to be creative and, and find some other ways to uh, to engage um, the community so yes I, um, I do think that we'll probably have to rely on public health because I don't I don't think there are any state guide I don't believe there are any state guidelines Mr. Mir are there I think you're right yeah okay thank you Welcome. Anybody else? I have a general question. Commissioner Shoneman. Um, I understand that the, the price of lumber has gone up um, dramatically, very dramatically. Um, do we use a lot of lumber in any of our departments? Um, only speaking for myself and my department, um, it'd be hard to give an exact number on that without doing a, a complete report on it. But I would say we use a low to moderate amount. I mean, every year there, uh, the winter is a time for, for projects um, that involve lumber mostly. Um, that's more of where we would use the most of it, whether it's building or renovating some sheds that we use at different parks or ball fields, uh, maybe making some repairs or building, building new picnic tables, stuff like that. So um, I'm, I can definitely say it has impacted us, the, the, the increase as much as 30% is what, what I'm hearing. Um, but it's not one of those things that's, sorry, um, it's not one of those things that's much the same as, say, the construction industry. We, we, don't, we don't use that nearly as much as we would other materials, say, soils and seed or fertilizer and stuff like that. Hmm. Uh, Commissioner Shoneman, do you have follow-up or anything? No, I was just curious. Um, I, I didn't figure we used a, a lot in any of the given departments, but if we did, um, it would probably be Parks and Rec. And maybe over the winter, they got their, uh, their lumber supplies before the prices went up <laughs> so dramatically. Yeah. Yeah, we, we do try to look at the trends and how they're going. I do much the same with uh, with fertilizer and seed. Um, that's also, we've seen an increase in that. Um, some of that is not necessarily on the pandemic. Some some things like seed are heavily based on, on drought in other parts of the country. Um, but I, I do look at that and look at the trends and try to buy when, uh, when we do know that we're going to need material and it's low as opposed to just reacting and and making just um, split decision calls on buying materials. So there's a lot of things that that are much the same that way. I, I, I can only assume that that John and the fleet department probably see it on steel. I know steel prices have gone up quite a bit over the past um, past year. So yeah. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Anyone else on Park Rec? Uh, Director Photo. Okay, uh, thank you, Mayor. We'll move to solid waste, and uh, the revenue is on page fifty-one. Superintendent Lafleur. Thank you. Would you like to start? Absolutely. Um, as as you guys can see, that the revenue for the solid waste department is pretty much staying flat. There's really no big changes. We don't see any anticipate any big changes happening from our revenue side. Uh, are there any questions for the revenue? I'll move over to the uh, appropriations on page 53. Um, as in every other department, contractual, <laughs> that's, a, that's a big one for all of us. Um, you will see it, uh, an uptick in my 51400 wages, temporary seasonal help. Just like Jason alluded to, we had to uh, raise some of our temp pricing just to get applicants in. So I'll have my uh, temps to help us pick up the yard waste, the bulky, the metal, all the... Uh, excess stuff that needs to be done at the landfill. Uh, if we continue on page 54, there's no changes. 
page number 55. Uh, one small change is on the accounting 53114. That's my amount that's uh, assessed for the city's uh, auditing services. Um, 53999. Um, you're going to see uh, an $80,463 change. I'm just switching that over to my 55699 account. It's an even swap over just to help clean up my uh, my budget. So I have my architects and engineering services pretty much in that account so I can keep track of that a little better. Page 56, uh, page 56, property services, doll purchasing, uh, purchasing for water heating. Uh, my equipment repairs and maintenance, the recommendation, that would be 54487. That's my recommendation from the fleet manager. He recommended that we all go up 3 to 5% on, on any of our parts and maintenance. Page number 57, uh, same thing, vehicle repairs and maintenance. Uh, that was recommended by fleet. 54828, my photocopier lease. I have a plan scanner here at the landfill. We're, we're scanning all of our old plans, putting them digitally. So we have them. They're all for our old landfills, new landfills, everything. We need to have copies of them. And that was actually never done in the in this department. And we're uh, trying to get up to speed with the uh, with the world on that. Same as uh, all the other departments for telephone and cellular, 55118. That's uh, added increase for iPads for my foreman. They're uh, using those a lot more and we have uh, services for that. Page 58, the only change on that page would be for uh, postage and delivery and that's a purchasing guideline. Page 59, 55699, that was the uh, change that I, I just spoke about. We moved over to this, to this line item to clean up my uh, uh, budget a little bit. Page number 60, purchasing guidelines for all the fuels. Um, cleaning and janitorial supplies. I'm, I'm going up a bit on that. Uh, we, we received a lot of our uh, cleaning and uh, janitorial supplies during the COVID process. Um, we we wanna keep up with that. We're keeping our equipment clean, keeping our employees safe with sanitizers and everything. So I'm going up a little bit on that. Uh, construction materials, as Commissioner Sonerman said about the the, uh, the lumber, I have a lot of buildings here that have lumber and we have some work that has to be done to them. They're starting to fall apart. There's, they've been neglected a little bit. So I went up with that on the construction materials side. Page 61. Uh, let me see here. Um, we're, we're working on all those. There's no changes to any of that. Page 62, you'll see the capital outlay and improvements of $950,000. Uh, 450,000 of that is for our phase three design and requests. We have uh, another phase to the phase three, as we all know, um, that I have to start working on this year to uh, continue to have airspace. Uh, 300,000 of that is the phase four permitting. We're working diligently on that. We're actually re responding to DES for some questions right now, but we're, we have a little bit longer to go with that with public hearings and other DES meetings. And then uh, 200 of that would be the recycling area upgrades. We're looking at working on uh, possibly doing another cover out there or changing around some uh, stuff at the landfill and repairing like our, our trash wall where the residents dump off. So we're looking at that. Um, and that is basically all the changes in my department. Are there any questions? Um, Mr. Mr. Pat, Mayor? Yeah, go ahead. So have, have things kind of calmed down for um, recycling? Has, has that pretty much, um, has that stopped increasing in, in cost? How have we been working out with that? Yes, actually, right now, the average cost right now is going down. We're at, uh, it's $81 and 50 50 cents a ton right now. That's averaging since last July till right now. It still fluctuates up and down. But we're at about eighty-one fifty total right now, you know, average. Okay. And it's still it's still working out to um, to put the glass when we put the glass on uh, as cover that that's kind of helping us not have to go back and ask the board of aldermen for more money for recycling. Absolutely, that that's working out perfect. Where I can use it both in the setback and I can use it as cover. We take in enough to help offset the costs on that. Okay, that's great, thank you. Um, one thing I think we should add is that although the expenses that uh, Mr. LaFleur has just prevented are up, 
I don't think this is in your budget, but or the the bottom line here, but the um, principal and interest payments on the landfill related debt are going down about four hundred thousand dollars. So overall, the transfer of general fund do, general uh, you know general fund tax dollars into the enterprise fund will actually uh, probably decline. Uh, so there'd be less tax support for the landfill this year than last based upon these budgets. Um, well, we have to, uh, have, have, have we fully paid for the new phase of the landfill or will we have to borrow more money for that? Well, we're going to have to keep borrowing on various projects, but, but, okay. um, you know, phase three, phase four, but, um, but we are also paying off you know, principal every year. So, um, right. So I think in uh, the the, um, the the fiscal year we're looking at, in other words, this coming fiscal year, we will be paying off two point three million dollars. Okay. So um, you know, although there's there is additional borrowing that goes on, there's also uh, pay pay down. So. Um, that helps. Good. All right. Um, but does any any other uh, commissioners have comments or questions for on the landfill? All right, uh, Director Photo. Uh, we'll move to uh, wastewater, and um, revenue starts on page sixty-eight. And I'll turn it over to Superintendent Boucher. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, wastewater revenues, as the director mentioned earlier, there is an increase uh, in, the, in the budget for wastewater. Uh, this is mostly due to the obligations of the uh, some recent capital projects and upcoming capital projects. And uh, we also did have a recent uh, sewer rate increase that covers those capital projects. I don't know if you have any questions about revenue specifically, but I can answer those. I'll try before I move on to appropriations. Right, move on to appropriations. Why you, why, yeah, why don't you move on to appropriations, <clears throat> Dave, um, okay. which uh, will start on page 71. Okay, under uh, line 51, we do have an increase of $38,835. This is mostly due to contractual adjustments, contractual obligations. And the next section on page 72, uh, line 52, there is a decrease. Uh, those are changes to employee benefits selections. And we do have on page 73, under account 53, there's a slight increase of $400. This is uh, due to an increase in auditing contract. Moving on to page 74, under account 54, we do have an increase. Uh, $6,492. This is mainly due to uh, utility uh, budgets per the purchasing guidelines and historical usage. Uh, we, we are expecting an increase in part repairs, uh, equipment repairs, vehicle maintenance. So we can increase there. Now moving on to page 76. Nope, sorry, 77. Uh, um, you skipped over 75. Yeah. Right? Uh, I think. Uh, no, I did uh, line 54. Now I'm on to account 55. Property services. Which the bottom line's on page 70. That's on page 75, right? Yeah, it starts on page 75. 
So other th services, there is an increase of $2,200 in that. Uh, that's basically telephone cellular. Uh, there was an increase in data plans. We also have uh, an increase in stipends, phone stipends on that line. I'm on page 78 under account 61, supplies and materials. There's an increase in that line of $10,743. This is a uh, projected fuel increases per purchasing guidelines. Uh, we also looked at some historical usage and costs for cleaning supplies. And I'm on page, oh, that's, that's it. Take any questions if you have any. Commissioners on uh, wastewater. None, none for me. Thank you. Anybody? No. All right. I direct your photo. That uh, concludes our presentation, Mayor. All right, uh, do commissioners have general questions or comments at this point? At I mean, we are ultimately looking here for a motion to approve or to approve the budgets as proposed. Mr. Mayor? Yes, Commissioner Chief. I, yeah, I, I wanted to uh, say thank you to the director and, and uh, all the superintendents. I think they did a nice job in light of the financial situation and I'd be happy to move uh, approval and recommendation of the budget as presented. All right, there is a motion. Any any comments or questions from anyone on any um, on any part of this? Uh, Commissioner Pappas. No, I, I you know I, I I think we we went into in, with great detail, and I I guess if it's kind of early in the process for us to approve this, so I just if I would just make a request. If there's anything, you know, any made any any big changes, I know you have the right to, you know, to make changes. Um, I, I know the mayor has has the right to do that. But if if you do if you do make some some significant ones that you you know if you if you think to let us know, I I think I would certainly appreciate that. I will definitely do that. Now, given the discipline with which Public Works has approached the budgets. Uh, I don't expect making any major changes, but if I do, um, I will let you know, definitely. All right, thank you. Anyone else, any of the other commissioners? Uh, staff, any comments, any additional things you wanna point out? If I don't the hear only, any- the only, the only thing I wanted to mention is, um, uh, Carolyn O'Connor has worked tirelessly <laughs> helping us to uh, to put this together, and um, and it and it really seems seamless um, today when we're going over it. But a lot of that is is thanks to her efforts. So I want to I also want to uh, thank Carolyn. She's worked very hard with the superintendents to get to this point. So thank you, Carolyn. That's thank all. you. Thank you. All right. So on the floor we have the motion to approve the budgets as presented. If there are no further comments, I will ask uh, Diane to call the roll. Wait for a roll call vote. Mr. Tees? Yes. Mr. Pappas? Yes. Mr. Shoneman? Yes. Mayor Donches? Yes. And the motion passes and the budgets uh, have been approved to to move on. Uh, I think we've completed our agenda. Is there a motion to adjourn? I'll move to adjourn. Motion by Commissioner Pappas to adjourn. Uh, could you please call the roll? Mr. Tees? Yes. Commissioner Pappas? Yes. Commissioner Shoneman? Yes. Mayor Donches? Yes, and the meeting is adjourned. The meeting of the Board of Public Works is adjourned at 11.04 at a.m. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you. Have a great day. Thank you very Bye. much. Bye now. Bye.